Hello everyone. The topic of uh, today's discussion is analysis of a pre-stress concrete section. When a particular uh, beam, uh, which is a pre-stressed, subjected to the load, uh, what kind of the stresses would be developed, and where, uh, which uh, layer uh, will be uh, subjected to? more complicated stresses or which kind of the stresses will be there where, where there, will, there will be a compressive stresses or a tensile stresses uh, all these things we are going to discuss today that is analysis of a pre-stress concrete uh, structures so the assumptions made in this theories or uh, you can go uh, through these assumptions uh, through IS-1343-2012 uh, these are the assumptions made uh, on the theory of a pre-stressing. First is the concrete is a homogeneous and elastic material. Of course, we need to assume it that concrete is a homogeneous and elastic material. Second, within the range of the working stress, the both concrete and steel behave elastically, notwithstanding the small amount of grip which occurs in both material under sustained loading. Simply implies that both materials should obey a Hooke's law. And third assumption uh, is that uh, you are very uh, well known to this assumption in RCC also that the plane before bending remains plane after bending. It simply implies that the strain distribution is linear. Okay, so I am not uh, elaborating these assumptions uh, because already we have done in design of structure. Notations and the sign convention used for the analysis uh, throughout this lecture or throughout this presentation is that is a P. Wherever we are using a P, it denotes that it is a pre stressing force. Pre stressing force by which uh, we are uh, inducing a stress or inducing a pre stress in a tendons. That is a pre stressing force. It is considered as a positive when it is uh, compressive in nature and negative when it is a tensile in nature. Okay. E is the eccentricity of a pre-stressing force. Now eccentricity, this is the point of discussion but I will discuss it in, uh, later on. Just uh, within a few uh, minutes, uh, we will move onward right now. M, M is the moment that is P into E. That is the pre-stressing force multiplied by its eccentricity. Again, what is the eccentricity? This is the quotient. We will discuss it later on. A is the cross-sectional area of a concrete member, I is the second moment of area, that is the moment of inertia uh, and ZT and ZB, here is ZT and ZB, that is the bottom sectional modulus and top sectional modulus, means section modulus of the cross-section above the neutral axis and section modulus of a cross-section below the neutral axis. Uh, if we consider a rectangular cross-section of B by D, then it is obvious that ZT and ZB will be at the same value. Why? Because the neutral axis for such section will lie at the mid of the depth because it is a rectangular. But if we uh, consider I section or a T section, I section with different flanges, T section. So in such cases, uh, neutral axis is, uh, doesn't lie at the mid of the depth. It lies somewhere asymmetrical. Correct. So, if this is so, definitely the distance of a neutral axis from bottom will be different that from top. That is YT and YB will be different and hence the section modulus will be different. We will deal with later on again. FT and FB. FT stands for stress at bottom most fiber. Sorry, T stands for top fiber stress at top fiber and B stands for bottom fiber that is a stress at bottom fiber these stresses are considered positive when they are of compressive in nature and are considered as negative when the tensile stresses are induced so simply remember that throughout the pre stress we are going to consider a consider a tensile stresses as negative that's it YT and YB, we have just discussed that this is the distance of the top and the bottom fiber from the centroid of the section. I is the radius of direction.